Oh, that's what that meant. Hey, I'm in here playing with image FX in the Google AI test kitchen. I'm creating some images and I just used a random prompt from Google and it didn't make any sense to me until the images popped up. And then I'm like, oh, that's what that was. So I had to stop and turn on the camera and show it to you. The random prompt that it came up with was silver coin with an smiling cat, comma, words five catnips. And I looked at that for a few minutes trying to understand what in the heck it was talking about. And then the images popped up over here and now it makes sense. It's a silver coin with a smiling cat. It's supposed to be smiling. Only one of them is smiling and words five catnips. That's the one that really had me baffled, but it put the text five catnips on each one of these coins. Except the one with a smile doesn't have a catnips, it has catmips. I don't know, maybe that's better than catnips. Whatever your prompt is in ImageFX, some of the words will be turned into chips, which is basically these little highlighted drop downs. They give you some alternatives for whatever the word is. So coin, maybe you want metal, token, stamp. Let's switch that up and see what it does with token. Now this time it also changed five catnips into a chip. The options it gives us, 10 catnips, one catnip, 20 catnips. Not that worried about the actual number of catnips. Heck, until this thing came up with it, I didn't even know I needed an image of a coin with a smiling cat and catnips on it. I thought the plural of catnip was catnip anyway. Oh, that one's smiling and it spelled it right. It's got it propped up in a little background with some shadowing. This one, not really smiling, but you know, for a cat, if you can get a smile, you're doing something. It got the five catnips right. I like how this one has the two pointy ears coming up off the circle edge of the token. That would be pretty rough if all our chains had these pointy ears and you had to carry it around in your pocket. This one did not put the text on. And then this one, I guess that's a smile and it got the five catnips right. Let's come hit this little start over button. That cleared out my prompt and it dropped a different prompt in there. If we want to use that prompt, just hit the tab key on your keyboard. It also has the I'm feeling lucky button, just like you have on the Google search page. You click that button, it'll come up with a new prompt and start generating four images for that prompt. And it's also working through to see what it might want to convert to chips. So what is this supposed to be? Fantastically surreal cityscape, edible composite buildings of bread, streets paved with luxurious dark chocolate, gourmet automobiles crafted from big juicy fruits, shallow depth of field, soft lighting. I see the chocolate street in this one right away. Looks like powder, but that could still be dark chocolate. This one as well. And this one's doing it too. We have our bread buildings. Yeah, I'd say those could be bread buildings. Maybe these uh, in the far end on this bottom right one may not so much. Our big fruity cars with fruit in in them. I don't know if they're made out of fruit. Some of them have fruit on them. When we hover over each image, we can edit the image. We'll have to check that out. You can copy, you can download, or you can either share a link or flag if something turned out like that needs to be flagged. Let's click edit image and see what that does. Draw over the part of the image you want to change. We can adjust the brush size, then describe what we want to change and generate edits. All right, that brush size is really, really big. Let's bring that down just a little bit there. How about if we highlight over this We'll brush over this car right here. I'll say car made of blueberries, hit generate edits. Well, that's a fun looking car. I don't think it's necessarily blueberries, but it gave us some other options here. Let's click this one. No, I don't think that's blueberries either. And that one's like worse than what we started with. And then that one. Okay, so we didn't get blueberries. There might be some tricks to prompting here because I never even would have thought silver coin with and smiling cat words five catnips would generate anything, but it managed to do something that makes sense with the prompt. So that makes me think there might be some nuances to image prompting here in ImageFX. We've got some settings down at the bottom. We've We've got a model setting, best quality, no other options there. I don't know why you'd want anything other than the best anyway. And it looks like we can also set the seed. This was fun. Let's see what happens if we generate something realistic. All right, I said a middle-aged woman sitting at a table eating an ice cream cone in front of an ice cream shop, words ice cream shop in quotes on the door. I don't know if we need quotes or not based on that other prompt. We'll see if this helps or hurts. Well, by golly, we got a middle-aged woman sitting in front of an ice cream shop, or I'm sorry, looks like a lice cream shop. Shop. I don't really want that. Looks like I got three generations this time. They're down here at the bottom. Let's click the second one. Okay, a middle-aged woman sitting in front of an ice cream shop at a table. It didn't put ice cream shop on the door and it added an extra E. Otherwise, let's see, one, two, three, four. Looks like she has the right number of fingers. How about that? Let's switch back to this one. Did it get fingers right? One, two, three, four, that looks right. This one looks a little weird, but I think it's passable. Oh, she's got a spoon. Who eats an ice cream cone with a spoon? All right, let's go over to our first one. Right number of fingers, the hands actually look nice and detailed and by golly look at this right above the door ice cream shop 
good job, Google. So what other options did it give us on this ice cream shop deal? If we drop that down, we could have a bakery, a restaurant, a candy shop. Okay, so it's the theme related, it seems like. And down here below our prompt, it gives us some ideas of things we might want to add into it. So maybe we say 35 millimeter film. We can click more. Oh, great. Yeah, let's add highly detailed into that mix. We could keep clicking more and get different suggestions that come up, but let's go ahead and stick with this. The ice cream shop sign jumps out at me right away. That's actually accurate and looks like it would be realistic. We ended up with a woman from the 50s, I guess, and she has some talents because she's managed to get this pointed ice cream cone to stand up on the table. So she's a redhead that does magic. Check out the next one here. Ice cream shop looks good. Again, we seem to be in a bygone era. But other than that, I didn't tell it it couldn't. That's the thing with AI. Whatever you leave up to creation, it can create something that you weren't even thinking could be created. But it absolutely adhered to the prompt. It got the text right. That's pretty impressive. How about this one? Okay, we got ice cream shop. That wording's kind of boring. The hands are nice and detailed. It looks like she has either just taken a bite and she's chewing or maybe she is kissing her ice cream. Hey, I'm not going to judge. And what's this one? Oh, this lady got a cup and a cone. She hungry today. Let's see. Ice cream shop. All right. And ice cream. Got it twice up there. Let's hit the start over. Why not do another? I'm feeling lucky. Medieval art badger. I have no idea what that is. I'm going to go ahead and close this little settings panel down here because we're not making any changes there. So might as well just get it out of our way. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Hey, apparently this isn't just about generating images, but this is about Bob learning what the heck things mean. So I suppose we've got a badger that's art and medieval it's supposed to be. Another generation. Ooh, trying to read this text sort of made me go a little cross-eyed. Let's show in the, the image there inside a book. It's a nifty take on it. But here we go. He was sitting for a professional portrait. Very nice. And another one right here. What does it do with these chips as far as options? Renaissance, Baroque, and Gothic. Some other things you might want to know. It looks like right now there is no option on the aspect ratio. It is square, one-to-one, -one, and they download at 1024 by 1024. Also, they have some rules about what you can and can't generate. If you hit this question mark in the upper right-hand corner, you'll get this little pop-up here. Prompts that would lead to images of children will not be generated, and certain queries that could lead to outputs of prominent people will also not be generated. If we look at the content categories, you can see this is very reminiscent of like YouTube's community guidelines, only it is aimed toward generative AI. Under the FAQ, it does tell us that each user is limited to a certain number of daily generations. If you've hit your limit, try out a different tool or come back the next day. Now it doesn't tell us what that number is here and it doesn't show us when we're in our generation screen or anywhere how many we've used for the day or how money we can use for the day, I guess just use it until you can't and then come back tomorrow. Popping back over to the ImageFX generation page. Ooh, I like this prompt. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll just click in this prompt box and if I hit tab, it accepts that prompt, generate and off will go. You can also, if it comes up with a prompt you like or you create a prompt here you wanna use elsewhere, you got this little copy button here, you can copy it. Now it came up with all kinds of chips in this prompt and look at our lions over there. All right, pop those up and make them bigger. There we go. So we should have a crowned lion with a crown of leaves on its head posing in the center of a sun-drenched grassy clearing, 70 millimeter photography, shallow depth of field, cinematic lighting, HD photo. And I feel like every one of these is really hitting the mark as far as the prompt goes. And I don't see any weird lion anatomy, although I'm not an expert on lion anatomy by any means, but none of them have three eyes or an extra paw coming out of their chest or anything like that. I'm really intrigued by the way they turn some of the words in your prompt into a chip. That is kind of a neat way to explain experiment with the impact of what changing a few words might have like oh grassy clearing let's make it mountaintop cinematic lighting what else do we have here oh we can be flat bright or diffuse let's go bright go ahead and create that one i think this could also be helpful for developing our prompt vocabulary by showing us some options of words that we might not have thought of. This one is really bright. I don't know if I buy that as a photo. Take a look at this one. I mean, these are good looking lions. This one looks like maybe it just climbed to the top of the mountaintop and sort of flopped there on the top. Like I made it, I'm done. And this one looks pretty good too. Two eyes, two ears, what else could you ask for? And if you wanna see everything that you've generated, just come up here to this image FX, drop down that arrow and click on my library. Here's all the images that we've created. And a lot like Google, 
Google Photos, it's sorted by date. So this is today's. And I have nothing in here for today prior to these cat coins. That's because I deleted all of today's generations because they were all just play images and I didn't want them cluttering up stuff. I do have my masterpiece here from the other day that I was working on. It, yes, indeed is a chimpanzee on the throne. Read a newspaper, don't judge me. If you want to check out image effects, I'll leave the link in the description. It is aitestkitchen.withgoogle.com forward slash tools forward slash image dash fx. You do need a Google account like a Gmail account. Otherwise, it's completely free. Hey, thanks for checking this out with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.